liberal filmmaker Michael Moore, that's him, at an anti-Trump rally in New York City back in November 2016. It turns out this was one of the protests allegedly organized by the Russians. Wow. So Michael Moore fell for it. Joining me right now for analysis on all the breaking news, American University executive in residence, Capri Cafaro, and conservative commentator Lawrence Jones. Uh, lots to talk about. We do have the kids uh, there in Florida making their way to Tallahassee as we speak uh, so that their voices can be heard on that tragedy there in Florida. There's talk that the White House uh, may be willing to uh, give a little bit on this issue, certainly when it comes to background checks uh, for those that seek weapons in this country, the idea that a guy like that, who's clearly mentally unstable, was able to access such a horrific weapon and do so much damage is something that is increasingly going to get talked about and something that should be addressed. Um, again, mark it off 119. We got a lot of news to talk about, but I want to start first with the Russians and their influence on this uh, election season and what they're trying to plan now. I mean, mm -hmm. Capri... I, I, I should start by first saying I don't think that you can influence things big time by right. being out there on social media. I do think you can influence things on the margin. But right. ultimately, Hillary Clinton was a poor choice for a candidate. She didn't relate to the people, including the Democratic voters that you represent there in right. a, or have represented in Ohio. She didn't connect with them. And that is fundamentally the problem that we had with the election as far as the Democrats were concerned. But, you know, people were falling for this. I mean, whether it be on Twitter or Facebook, right. or Michael Moore out there working with the Russians, or whether it be CNN helping the Russians mm. to do their job. Mainstream media that uh, really has made it much easier for the Russians themselves. That said, what do we need to be doing to stop it and to make sure it doesn't happen again? Well, a few things. I think that, uh, you know, as you said, Trish, I mean, I, I think that this is something that and, and it's been widely acknowledged, at least up to this point, that while the Russians did try to sow discord uh, amongst the American public in our electoral system and tried very hard that they did not influence the outcome of the 2016 election. But the intelligence community is saying that, you know, they're already at it again, trying to utilize technology in one way, shape or form to mess with the 2018 election. So I think a, a number of things need to happen. Number one, uh, you know, the Facebook, Twitters, and, and tech companies of the world and social media need to be responsible corporate citizens, step up to the plate and recognize that they have a, an important role to play as well. And the American public, frankly, also needs to, like, not jump on everything that they want to agree with. I think that there is a desire. Look at Michael Moore, for example. Here's a guy that wanted to believe this, and so they latch on to it. We need to be more judicious about how we consume information. We need to be more responsible and understand that it might not always be legitimate, um, mm -hmm. you know, and we have to consider the source. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. that it's going to take individuals as well as corporate America and the intelligence community to really combat this. Yeah, I, you know, a little bit of a, a self plug here or shameless plug for for our network i mean lauren Jones, i think about how our competition uh, treated their debate that they had versus what mm. sandra smith and myself uh what we did and what maria bartiromo and neil cavuto did uh, and i can tell you we uh, spent many 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 hours together prepping our questions mm. all of us together and really making sure that we were being fair that was our, our priority, fair to every single candidate that came in front of us there at those initial debates. I cannot say the same for our competition. Those questions were very loaded. They, uh, in some ways, they looked like they could have been written by the Russians themselves. So I, I would, right. you know, only say, I say this because Capri is right. Americans do right. have a responsibility here to be seeking out the best sources of news. And um, if you're watching the show right now, <laughs> I'll commend okay. you for that. But I, I think that, you know, we need to, um, we need to be fair in all of these cases. And uh, unfortunately, increasingly, the media simply is not, and they're doing the Russians well, lifting for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, the problem is, and, and, and I, I would like to piggyback on what you said, Trish, and that's why you guys got uh, national praise and because you put all the candidates on the hot seat and you really challenged them on their economic agenda 
uh, and what they would do to make the climate for business better as well and for us as the American people. But the media, although the voters have a duty to do their research on candidates as well as on these rallies. I went to a ton of rallies with the Tea Party, and I knew all the campaign organizers for all of those uh, rallies. Uh, the American people have that right to do their due diligence, but the media also has a responsibility to give the American people the correct information. And it seemed like because they did take a side during this election that they weren't able to vet these rallies, vet this information that was going out to the American people before um, it reached the American people. Yeah, no, I mean, and that's uh, that's tragic, but uh, it happened. So as we look forward here, now what what needs to happen next? I mean, <laughs> Lawrence, the uh, <clears throat> the administration, you know, the Trump administration is now saying you know, that they recognize that this happened, um, but they weren't as forthcoming about that earlier. Perhaps the you know the breakdown is really it. Did it? hugely influenced the election and it didn't That's because a, again it, you know she could have gone to pennsylvania she could have gone right. and, and made nice with coal miners she didn't do those things she never from, showed up in my neck of the woods really, really? Right. Uh, well, you know, well you know trish yeah go ahead Lawrence. well you know trish uh here's the problem the president has been uh not as critical uh, from a voice standpoint on Twitter and, and, and going publicly of this whole Russia thing because there has been this connection of if it actually influenced the election, mm -hmm. as you said. But when you talk about his actual policies, all the way from... This is kind of how the way the world works, right, Lawrence? In right. other words, we should assume, and shame on President Obama for not being more aggressive we should assume the russians are always trying to gather information on us and they're always trying to mess with us this has gone on for decades it's nothing new the difference now lawrence is that there are social media platforms that make it easier maybe they don't have to send someone right. here they can have a russian bot doing the work for them but the reality is this has always existed. And I'd say uh, the Chinese right. also are probably right. trying to exercise mm -hmm. their influence however exactly. they can. We, let's not kid ourselves, at least uh, historically, have also tried to influence things all around the world, uh, and understandably so. I mean, I just think everybody's being a little bit naive, and perhaps that was just, you know, President Obama, another excuse for him. But he... He could have done more. He should have done more. And I hope to goodness we are doing more. Well, remember, Trish, uh, President Obama said back then that it would not affect. Uh, he he, he uh, accused Donald Trump of being a baby when it came to it. And he said, we know from people within the State Department that the president didn't want to get involved because of the political ramifications. And so what we did see from the past administration is that they really played politics with this issue. Uh, they could have been a lot vocal about this, uh, but at, at the end of the day, Trish, uh, all the other countries are going to continue to do this. We're gonna now, what we're about to witness is President Obama colluding with Russia five years ago, just before his second term. And he said that during his second term, after his second election, he will be more flexible for Vladimir Putin. Isn't it a shame that the media forgot about this? And they talk about Russian collusion, about the Trump campaign. And here we have our president, President Obama, colluding with Russia. Let's refresh our memories for those who missed that a few years ago. My last election, I am more flexible. Yeah, I understand. I transmit this information to Vladimir and Vice President. So basically, Obama didn't know that he was on hot mic. He didn't realize that the mic was still on and everyone could still hear what he was doing. Imagine what else he was saying when the mic was off. If he did that here in a public setting, he had the brazenness to collude with Russia at, during his election time. Well, don't you think he would have been colluding before? Perhaps that's why a lot of his policies were pro-Russia. It seems like 
Obama, Barack Obama and the Democrats were more interested in making Russia great again instead of America great again. I would I would suggest that anyone that Obama supports, anyone who's tied to Obama will probably be doing the same thing because the Democrats that that the Democrat Party supports, of course, would rather Russia be great again than make America great again. We should all thank Donald Trump for the nice tax reforms that he's given us. He's given us nice tax benefits and tax breaks. But as for Barack Obama, the Democrats, we don't want to go back. We don't want to be set back again. So let's vote for Republicans to make America continually great again. Thank you. God bless America.